There is a time machine of sorts at the Van Nuys Airport. The minute you step into the Valley Relics Museum, you blast to the past, LA's past. And even if you didn't grow up in Southern California, you'll look around and just say, wow. Valley Relics is really a pop culture museum located in the Valley with the spotlight of local history. The Valley has so much history, we're like Hollywood number two. Tommy Gelinas is the founder of the Valley Relics Museum. His infatuation with preserving the past has always been in his blood. By the time I was about 20, 24, the internet was still young. You typed in the Valley and there wasn't anything. And so that's really what got me started about 20 years ago to figure out what happened to the Valley's history. Today, Tommy has filled two Van Nuys airport hangars, 10,000 square feet in total, with incredible Valley history. You're gonna see 30% of the overall <laughs> collection, but you know, we're really focused on local history, but the local history is global. Right. You know, the Valley produced 62 million Chevrolets. We made warplanes by having Lockheed here, Boeing, satellites, the whole BMX movement, and then all the movies that were made right. here. So the Valley has a lot of history, and there is a huge connection between LA, Hollywood, and the Valley and that's what the museum's doing. I can relate to Tommy's efforts. I too preserve Southern California history and culture through my vintage Los Angeles blog and social media sites. I think between you in the valley and me over the hill- It between, worked out. Between the two of us, we have Southern California covered. covered. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's no one else doing it. We're both natives. Right. You know, I don't, know if that, I don't know if that has something to do with our obsession with our nostalgia of seeing our childhood sort of, you know, they, they rip a lot of our childhood down. Yes, they, yeah, <laughs> and, absolutely. And, and like you, I love to preserve things and have something I can touch, maybe something that I remember as a kid that, so when I come in here, I immediately think of Dairy Queen, but I haven't thought of Dairy Queen right. in years. Yeah, you know, pulls the, a lot of heartstrings. Yeah. Orange Julius pulls at me the hardest. I miss those stands that used to serve us when we were kids. People come in here and if you're a tourist, they get it right. and, and they love it. But if you're local, it's really can be okay. emotional. Has anyone come in here and started crying like I did when I first came in? A lot. <laughs> a lot of us growing up with all this stuff, we just think it's gone forever. And then here behind the scenes for 20 wow. years, I've been accumulating it. And all of a sudden you walk in here and you're like, oh my God. But there's plenty here to experience and you really need more than one visit to see it all. For starters, you can see fun pop culture kitsch like Phyllis Diller's wig, Charlie Chaplin's pajamas, and movie and TV props. Can we see what's in these cabinets? Absolutely. Okay, because I see something that's already blowing my mind. Is that a real I Dream of Genie bottle? Yes, that is what? a real I Dream of Genie bottle. This was Eve's door that was in her bedroom. It's the door from my childhood home. Uh, my parents let me put stickers on my door and I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, so it's got random political stickers and uh, uh, things from Mad Magazine. Those stickers that are on there are stickers that I grew up with, you know? So um, to have it here at the museum, um, she was willing to donate it. There's Roddy McDowell's mask from The Planet of the Apes, an important collection celebrating the iconic Palomino Club. Memorabilia from Nudie, the famous L.A. cowboy costumer, and even the footprints and the wig from Iron Eyes. Iron Eyes, are you kidding? Yeah, so. I mean, talk about L.A. history. Right, and he was really well known as the crying Indian. He did the PSA. People start pollution. People can stop it. So that PSA really had an impact. But later on, we found out that he went in for the part and he looked like an Indian, but he was actually Italian. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I just I, love this kind this of stuff. Is, what are you doing to the Jack in the Box clown? He's going bye bye, lady. But he's so cute. Cute was the old Jack in the Box restaurants. Tommy, talk about a good vibe. I mean, how do you have one of these Jack. original Jack in the Box? What years was this? Uh, 60s, uh, uh -huh. 70s. It was the and, 70s. Yeah, and I, I remember this me as too. a very young kid. Yeah, I think late 60s, yeah. definitely 70s, uh, into the 80s. Before do you know which they, one this is from? Um, this one is from the Balboa and Roscoe location, but they were all the same. And it's if anywhere. you look right behind <laughs> you, they had the, the bonus burger, Jack Cola, orange root beer, onion rings, and then of course, shrimp for 59 cents, which <laughs> oh I thought was God. great. 
And as I'm again. talking to you, I'm looking over there because the Pioneer Chicken sign is calling me. Yeah, I mean, should how amazing is that? Feast your eyes and feed your family on the great taste of Pioneer Chicken. This week only, feed four for four forty four. Pioneer Chicken was the place for fried chicken in both L.A. and the Valley. Instantly recognizable by that cool neon sign that Tommy saved from the wrecking ball. The neon and iconic signs, they seem to call to everyone. Tommy has rescued and preserved many one-of-a-kind L.A. favorites. Displayed high on these hangar walls, the collection is nothing short of breathtaking. You know, if you lived in Southern California, the Los Angeles area, even the Valley, <laughs> we experienced a lot of the same restaurants, right. a lot of the same grocery wow. stores. So I've made a couple contributions to the, to the Valley Girl Museum in a way. Yeah, oh yeah, some of our best signs, such as uh, Tiffany Theater sign, Ben Franks, well, I tipped you off on them. I, I told you where they were. Yeah. <laughs> and you went and got but, them. But, yeah. that, but that's how it works, <laughs> yeah. though. I mean, the community is so involved in what we're doing. And you get a tip from, let's say, a fan, and then you say, hey, Tommy, could you save this? I mean, that stuff is so important. We're not funded by any bank or any government. We are truly funded by the community. And this museum has been a community push. It's a the labor of love from everyone that it lives is. in the city. But from ashtrays to neon signs to rare photographs have all been donated. So it's kind of by the community right. for the community. Thank you so much, Allison, for that. The Valley Relics Museum is open Thursdays through Sundays. And for all the latest exhibit information, follow them on Instagram, at Valley Relics Museum.